Hey guys, it's Scratch Creations, and this is a very special video. How? Because it's the first video of the new year. And also, this is part one in a brand new series I'm making. But this is not just any series. This is the first in a four-part exotic game series teaching you how to use Scratch in an exotic way. If you're new to the channel, my name is Scratch Creations, and if you can, then please hit that subscribe button. It really means a lot to me. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into this. Okay, so in this four part series, you're gonna be learning how to create this game. It's an arcade game where you have to collect as many fish as you can in the time limit. And every time you get a fish, it increases the score. So, yeah, it's a game we're gonna be making. And you could make, and you could add so many extra features to this game. You could make the big fish right over here worth five points. You can make it harder by making the timer speed up. So, and you could also add some other features to it. So, all in all, it's a great little game to get your feet wet with exotic scratch. All right, let's get started. To make a new project, you click the create button. Then name your project. I'll name mine fishing game. Now in this first tutorial, you're going to be learning about the fishing hook physics. Okay, first thing you're going to do is first get all the sprites. I'm going to draw them, but if you want to upload the sprites like I did in the demo project, you're more than welcome to do that, but I'll come back to you when I've finished drawing the boat. Okay, so here's a finished product of my boat. Now, in or now let's move on to the fishing hook. So we're going to first paint a new sprite and then go to the paintbrush tool, change it to gray. And then make the top of the fishing hook that color. In fact, that's not straight enough, so I gotta do it again. That's pretty good. Now, this is important. Uh, the hook of the fishing hook must be a different color than this top of the fishing hook. It's it's not. If it's not, then it's it's the code's not gonna func function properly. Okay, so. And another thing that's really important: this top of the fishing hook has to be lined up with the center over here otherwise the code's not going to function properly again then we're going to move the fishing hook over here and we can start coding but actually no we have to name these sprites i'll name it fishing hook and boat and okay now we can start coding we're gonna say when go clicked set size to 17 percent then we're going to say forever if key down arrow is pressed. If we're going to get not block. If not size. Sorry, we're going to. If not size is greater than. So if size is not greater than 134, then we're going to change the size by 3. This is going to make it go down. And if the up arrow is pressed, it's just going to be the opposite. If size is less than 17, then change size by, if not size is less than 17, then we're going to change size by 3. Now, yeah, that works. But you might be thinking, well, this is just, well, this is a really long way. Why not just do it the shorter way? Why, why not just do when down arrow pressed all that code? Well, look at what happens. Okay, that's with the when down arrow pressed, and this is with the if down arrow pressed. What did you notice? That's right. The when down arrow keys pressed is kind of blocky and chunky, and it, it's just not that smooth. And the if down arrow pressed is smooth. So what difference does that make, you might ask? Well... It makes a lot of difference in the game because if you just have this one down arrow key pressed, then it's just gonna. If you want to get a fish down here and you want to act fast, it's it's not really. You, you're not gonna get the. You're not gonna get that instant time to uh, get this fish with this one down arrow key pressed. Whereas with this if down arrow key pressed, you could get that immediately really smooth so that's why you do it like this and not like that okay so as you can see the fishing hook works all good all right uh, that's it for the fishing hook but not the, the the end of the video 
but because that would be too short. What I'm going to do instead is uh, make the backdrop for which our game is going to run on it. And what this backdrop is, it's basically a bunch of uh, shades of blue. So this is for the sky. And this is for one layer of water. This is for two layers of, this is for the second layer of water. Oops. This is for the third layer of water. It's very short. And then this is for the fourth layer of water, the darkest layer of water there is. Okay. And to keep things from being too short, again, I'm also going to give you a preview of the next lesson of what the next lesson will be all about. Alright, so in the next lesson we're going to be uh, doing our fish coat, so I'm going to be making a fish right now. Okay, so I've made the fish. Now, the coat of the fish is a bit more trickier. It's a bit more tricky. So, we're gonna say when go clicked, set ghost effect to zero. And then we're gonna set the size to 20% because right now it's way too big. Even bigger than the big fish. Then, uh, later on, we're gonna choose this, we're gonna uh, add a different fish. We're gonna add a second fish. It's gonna be the big fish. But, and then we're gonna switch a random costume. But for now, we're not gonna worry about that. Instead, what we're gonna do is set color effect from one to 100. So it's gonna pick a random color to be. Then, uh, let's just see, okay. So, oh, that's a bit too small even. See, you just have to experiment around with the numbers. And I'll just get rid of this. I'm trying to know why. why get rid of the eye? Uh, I'll just make this a bit shorter. And the set size to 40 is fine. And now we're going to say go to, then go to negative 232 because that's what it was before. And then, now the Y, the Y is something a bit different. Uh. What the Y is going to be is we're going to uh, get out this new block called, uh, we're going to uh, make a list. Something new that we haven't covered, but lists are basically like we're listing and then we're picking items from the list. So it's much better than variables or functions in, in some ways. We're just going to call this fish x pause. And we're going to say... When the green flag is clicked, we'll just move the list over here. This is, this is how the list looks like. And I'm gonna say, when the green flag is clicked, add, and then thing to fish x pause. So watch what that does. It just adds the word thing to fish x pause. And uh, at the start of the game, we always wanna reset the fish x pause variable so that it's not gonna add, keep on adding to the list. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a Y position, this, this particular Y position, uh, 73. Then we're gonna go here, we're gonna add, this Y position is five. Then we're gonna go here, we're gonna add another Y position. That's negative 58. And we're gonna add our last Y position which is negative 135. Okay, so let's see. It just adds to that list, but obviously it doesn't choose a Y coordinate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say item, it's gonna pick a specific item. Item, pick random, one to four. 
so that's basically gonna pick a random coordinate from this uh, fish ox pot. Uh, oh, I actually, I actually gotta rename that. I made a mistake. Sorry about that. It's fish Y pause. Uh, it's going to pick a random Y position from this list uh, from fish Y pause. Let's just hide the list and see if it works. And as you can see, it's picking a random item from the list. And yeah. Next up, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say broadcast spawn new fish. And then we're gonna say when I receive spawn new fish, we're gonna duplicate this go to. And then we're gonna say again, set ghost effect to zero. But then here's something different because we have to say repeat until we're not gonna get it greater than repeat until the X position is greater than 239. Then we're gonna make a new ver then we're gonna make our variable called fish speed. And we're gonna be moving a uh, move fish speed steps. And at the start of the game. We're always gonna set fish fish speed to three. Oh. Then we're gonna say broadcast spawn new fish once again. Then we're gonna say when I receive spawn new fish. Let's see. We're gonna need this color. We're gonna say when I receive spawn new fish forever. If touching the color of this fishing hook. That's why we put it a different color because if, if it touches this part, it doesn't really, we don't want it to do anything. So we don't want it to uh, get reeled in if it's not even touching the hook. So only if it's touching the hook, it's going to get reeled in. And the reel in effect, we're gonna get a repeat loop. And we're gonna say change ghost effect by 10. And then after that, you're gonna say broadcast spawn new fish. Now remember that the broadcast spawn new fish, this 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 one has to be inside of the if touching color loop uh, uh, statement, but outside of the repeat loop. So now let's test it out. Oh, as you can see, it works perfectly. So yeah, that's how we get the real effect. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Okay, let's test it out now. It's really important when you're making these games to always test out your programs uh, as you're going. So, uh, it's like you, you can find out what problems you have now instead of waiting till the end and then finding out all the problems. It's just easier to test out right now. So, let's just test it. As you can see, everything we did in this lesson works perfectly. Let's see it moves to the edge and it'll do that. All right. All right, that's it for part one and how, on how to make a fishing game in Scratch. Stay tuned for part two where we'll be adding a scoring mechanism, losing chances, and a timer. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a like. Also subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I make a new video. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in part two. Goodbye everyone.